communicating a status. Again, good or bad. Is it very bad? Is it okay? Is it good? Is it great? Should we hire someone or should we fire someone or should we promote someone? This is all about conditional formatting. Something that we know about the number and we want to communicate it to the viewer. So right now I have a scorecard, which is green. It is not because I chose the background to be always green, it's because I applied a conditional formatting rule to it, right? If I choose something else, so if I try to change data and bring it, just show tablets, so the number changes, we can see that the background changes. If I just choose a mobile, then it might also change to, yeah. So depending on the number, we can apply different criteria and we can either ch change the color of the text, the font, or the background. And the order of the rules matter. So let's see what we're looking at. Choosing the scorecard under this style tab at the top, we have conditional formatting. And we can see that three rules are applied. Let's take a look at these rules. It says, if the value is less than 2000, make it like this. So kind of light red background with, with whatever font color there is, okay? Now, the next one would be, if it's greater than 20,000, then it would be red. Greater than 30,000, it would be green. Now, what if I change the order of these rooms, right? It is still says that all values greater than 30,000 would be green. But let's reset. And we will see that the number is actually more than 30,000, but it's still yellow. It's because the second, the third rule also applied, applies to this number. So this is also true. So Data Studio first evaluates this one. This is not true. So it doesn't apply the condition of formatting. Then it tries to apply this rule, which is again applies. So it makes it green, but a few milliseconds later, it will also see that, yeah, it's also greater than 20,000. So I can make it, I have to make it. Yeah, so the orders matter and please keep in mind. And if you apply different kind of condition formatting and it doesn't behave the way you want it to, then usually it's because of the order. Okay, any questions about this? All good. Now, the scorecards are not the only type of charts that we can apply condition formatting to. We can also apply it to a table. And here I have two versions of a single table with conditional formatting apply, right? The first one just uses different shades of a color, right? Shades of green to show the, to help us identify which one is higher, which one is lower. The other one uses something that data to calls color scale or a gradient from one color to another. In this case, from red to green to show from values high or low. And what are the problems with these two? Is anyone like me unhappy with the way these two work? Okay. Let me tell you what are my problems with heat maps or things like this on a table. First of all, it's not really clear how different these numbers are only based on the shade of the color. So if I cover the actual numbers, it won't be easy to figure out how much higher this shade is from this shade is from this shade, right? It's really not a good way to figure out from this one to this one, are, is it increasing or decreasing? 731, 779, they're all basically the same color. So this is something that I usually don't like. Another thing that I don't like about it is that whenever we are applying something from a very dark shade to a very light shade, sometimes in the middle, there might be very low contrast between the shade of the background and the actual number, right? And it makes it hard to read. That is another thing that I do not like. But anyway, if it's sorted, we already know that the top numbers are at the top, higher numbers are at the top. This one, it has two problems. First of all, I applied the wrong type of gradient. So I'm, I'm trying to say that more new users is worse because I'm applying the color red to it instead of green. So the first thing which I can fix is that I need to change the 
order of the gradient. So I have to select this one and under the style tab, edit the rule here. And it's a gradient. Let's see if there is another gradient, which is uh, starts with green. It doesn't. So I manually need to make the first one red and the final one green. And now it actually makes sense. If it was bounce rate, then it was okay. But now I want green to show better values. Can I, sorry, can I interrupt for one second? Yep. When you say the single color, this may be the dumbest question of the day, but single color on the left-hand side here, that looks like the same, that there's different colors there to me. Is it just like the intensity of the green we're talking about? Yeah, that... yeah intensity of the green. So it's monochrome. Okay. Yeah. That's called mon that's considered monochrome. Maybe I'm colorblind, but I just look at it differently. All right, cool. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. No worries. It is the yeah, it is the shade of a single color, not just a single color. Because it was if it was single colors, it would have been meaningless. It doesn't show the change in the value. But now with this one, again, I have a problem. And you, you can't mention the keyword colorblind. Maybe some of our viewers are colorblind and they cannot see the shades from and in a most type of color blindness is from green to red and orange. So it might make it less accessible for people to figure out that we are actually trying to communicate something with these colors. And with that, I will like to go back to my table example. This is my favorite type of showing different values on the table because I can see how much larger this is to this one very quickly. And even if you cannot see the difference between the colors, right? It doesn't matter because you can already get the whole information from this. Chart. Okay. Now on the conditional formatting, something else I wanted to mention on the table because it still can be valid in many times if used differently. So first of all, each of the rules that we have like should not simply be a simple rule. So for each of the rules, we can have multiple criteria. So we can have new users if less than this or something as and something as so we can mix and match different criteria with and and or to come up with the exact rule that we want to apply to the table or to the conditional formatting. This is the first thing. And the second one is, for example, if we are, if our rule is based on new users, if our rule is based on revenue, it doesn't mean that we're limited to only change the background or font color or conditionally format that metric as the result of this rule. Again, it doesn't matter which metric are we using for the rule, we can apply the resulting conditional formatting either to the entire row or to a completely other cell on the table. Let's say, take a look at this one. So let's see, what do I have here then? This one is scrolled at the top. So new users, less than 200, I want to make the same cell, the background to red. New users, less than 200, the background becomes red. Revenue less than 200, I want the text to be red. Revenue goes less than 200, I want the text to be red. This is also cool. Sessions greater than 200. So now I'm looking only that at sessions, but I'm applying the conditional formatting to the whole row. This is also something we can do, right? Apply to the whole row. And final one, new users, if it's equal to zero, new users equals to zero, change the formatting, of source medium. We can also do that. So we can not touch the, the metric that the rule is based on and actually change something else. And with conditional formatting, my, my rule of thumb is to, when I have a table, for example, and I perform the data modeling, I prepare it the way that the client wants, I will present it to them and I will ask them, how do you read it? What are you looking for? When you read this table, what are you scanning it for? Are you scanning for low values? If they say yes, I would say, okay, lower than what? Are you scanning for negative values or are you scanning for zeros or anything? And when they tell me now that the presentation and the report's ready, how they're going to use it, how they're going to read it, how they, are they going to scan it? Then I would tell them, okay, these ones, I can actually highlight them for you. So you spend less time trying to find them, especially in a large table with many words, okay? So this is a, a good way of using conditional formatting. I usually don't apply conditional formatting before 
presenting the simpler version of the table, the raw version of the table to the client, to the viewer, and ask them, how are you going to read it? Because for other, for different people, you might want to apply different kind of formats. I have a quick question. Yep. Where exactly do you specify whether it's going to be an entire row or just a cell? Yep. With the text, I that, that was clear, but it was not clear. Yeah. At the top, you define the criteria, format rules, and at the bottom, I would say now, if this is true, if this is true, I want to either apply the formatting oh, that I, I apply here to the entire row or to any of the metrics or dimensions that I choose. So then it would be just the cell. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I should just add, this is, first of all, the good thing is that you mentioned you first ask the client, how does it perceive the, the colors or what do they want to see yep. from there? And okay, this is just an example and you show this conditional formatting within a table, but usually I don't think that conditional formatting is useful for such a small tables with small, less than, I don't know, 10 rows of data or something. Yeah. I actually, I'm looking at my Google sheet with 800 days of COVID data in it with several columns that has conditional formatting. And it is very useful for me when I enter the new data to see conditional formatting applied from the red to green. How does it affect the new data? Then I don't need to scroll all the way up to see it in total. So it's much more useful in large data sets than especially in such small data sets as you showed. But of course, this is for demonstration purposes. So. Yeah, of course. Well, large, they actually have it. I have an example of a client. They have bookings, which they set, and their managers at the end of the day, they enter how many number of bookings they delivered, right? So we have number of bookings from raw data. That's the absolute truth. How many, let's say, services booked. And then the manager at the end of the day actually puts in their database how many services provided. And we have a report for them. For all of those tools and all of their departments, it's a very large report per day, so maybe thousands of rows per day. And they only wanted to highlight the days where the number of services provided entered by the managers is actually more than the number of services booked. So they wanted to quickly scan it to figure out hand king errors by them. And that would, yeah, that would help them with a conditional formatting. 